CC is a construction company, and uh, we are focused on mega projects. What do you mean by mega projects? Like airports, mega airports, uh, metros. Basically, we are focusing on mega jobs that very few um, engineering or construction companies does around the globe. And we, we believe we have developed the expertise to do it quite economically. We value, uh, you know, the most important thing is safety of our workers, to go back home safely. And we are an international company. What do I mean by international company? We have at least, I would say, in any given project, 80 or 90 nationalities. We have been able to integrate this pool of resources from around the globe. So we try to get the best from wherever we can to execute our projects in a very safe and uh, very economical, and we deliver on time. I think what differentiates CC from other companies is that we are a family-based company. And when I say family, not only family-owned. I mean we have the family culture. You know, my father and my uncle who started this company had a very clear message of values. And they are very simple. Integrity, honesty, transparency, hard work. And uh, we treat everyone in CC as a family member. That means, you mentioned, we are today 150,000 people. We have about 20,000 at staff. And we consider these 20,000 staff as brothers, colleagues, sisters. So not as a number when our employees. That gives you the loyalty. And we are spread on more than 40 countries on four continents. This way, when you know somebody represents CEC, he's talking about his company rather than talking about a company. I think the decision that my father and my late uncle took when they moved the company uh, here in 1976 was a good choice. Even though uh, we can see that the economic downturn the last six, seven years had its toll on all companies, including CEC, but at the end, the objective to stay here didn't change. You know, our target to stay here because we feel the uh, benefit uh, definitely outweighed the negatives of staying here. And, you know, we consider ourselves now, uh, this is for me home. You know, and most of our staff consider Greece home. All our, uh, you know, whether it's family, whether it's uh, relatives. And we think the added value of staying in Greece outweighed leaving here. Although it was a painful uh, four or five years, I think the reforms, and the changes that the governments and the parliament have put in place will make Greece more competitive in the future, in many ways. Uh, we can see that, that uh, some of the industries um, are opening up. If you take, for example, the trade industry, if you look at the, um, the Chinese and the interaction of the um, port here, if you look at the Frankport and the interaction with the airports, if you look at the new um, agreement for the gas uh, between the region, Cyprus and this region. If you look at the natural gas that's going to come um, uh, through FSRU in the northern of Greece, all this integration, I believe, will make um, the energy cheaper in Greece. It will make the labor market more competitive. And hopefully, uh, the only thing that I'm hoping for is that the banking system, this is where I still see uh, but I'm sure that with the government and with the help of the EU, this will become strong again to revitalize some of the small businesses to be reactivated again. But definitely, I think uh, for us, we see that Greece has a chance of uh, uh, gaining much more competitiveness through the reform process that has been done the past four to five years. And this is um, the first question you asked me, I go back to it. What differentiates family companies from non-family companies? Family companies associate the name of the company with their family, and that means reputation. That means we think of uh, long term, we think of 10 years, 20 years, our kids, our kids' kids, while corporate America or uh, people who are in the stock market look at the, what will the stock show them at the end of the year, what's their bonus at the end of the year. They don't look at the long term. That's why I think what we and I think you know that in Greece, many of the big conglomerates are family-owned as well. They share, they share the same values. This summit, the purpose of it, you know, it was started a few years back and now it's an annual summit. The idea is that we feel the trade between the Middle East, all 22 Arab countries, and Europe, and to be more specific, Greece, is not to the level we want it to be. 
And uh, one of the reasons is that uh, there was too much focus on oil or oil derivatives. And we think that uh, Greece, for example, and Europe has more to offer rather than just an oil product or on shipping. So the purpose of this summit is to bring businessmen from both sides of the equation, from the Middle East and from Europe, and to let them do um, more presentation of what each can offer. And we, our target is that to increase the trade, both inflow and outflow, from Greece and from Europe to the Arab world. And we think, I'm not saying we have succeeded, there's an incremental amount, but if you notice the number of attendants, not only government, the uh, businessmen from both sides in the last three years has been increasing incrementally every year. And I think you're going to see results in the next few years, uh, more trade, more agreement. We are a catalyst, if you say. What we're encouraging specifically now is that Greece, I think now, is an ideal place to invest, uh, not because I live in Greece, but because uh, three factors. Number one, real estate. Uh, there is lots of an opportunity in real estate now, and that's very attractive, and many of the Arab investors came to look at that. Second is tourism. Tourism plays a major role, if you look at it, not as uh, uh, one-spot tourism, as a regional tourism. If you look at Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, this region, as a touristic area. And the third, which I already mentioned, the energy sector. So I think that these are three fields where we felt in this um, conference there will be more projects to be, joint projects to be announced. I think 2019 will be uh, better than 2018. And I will mention, I'll start to focus on the Middle East because this is where I'd say 60% of our turnover is. First, let's talk about the oil companies. Oil companies are two parts. There is the national oil companies like Kuwait Oil Company, Abu Dhabi Oil Company, and there is the Exxon, the PPHL. When the prices was low the last four or five years, many of them didn't spend much. Their capex, which is the investment in new project, has went at least down by 20 to 25 percent. And anybody in the oil business knows to maintain production and to maintain your reserves of oil, you have to invest. So if you look at their projected um, capex in the next three years, it has definitely increased their projection. That means for people like us, we can see more pipeline of projects. That's the first point. Second point. Uh, Middle Eastern countries are, uh, in their, although they're trying to diversify the economy, their major source of income is still oil, specifically if you look at Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait. And with the prices now hovering around 60 versus two years ago it was 40. So they have enough uh, uh, budget surplus in order to spend on these mega projects. So that's the second reason. Third, the Arab world is uh, increasing in population. We are one of the highest region of people who have, uh, you know, average uh, per family, maybe f four kids, four plus even, versus uh, Europe is less than two, or two around, hovering around two. So that means social infrastructure. You have to build schools, you have to build airports, you have to build. So with these three factors, we can see definitely, and today we are witnessing an increased amount of tenders. That means that 218, we can see more awards coming in the market. Now, uh, based on that, I'm optimistic. 218 will be a transition year. 219, sorry, will be a transition year. And hopefully, as you said, 218 was the turnaround, and 219 will be much bigger in the market. You know, we have a company called CC Energy, which is many specialized in actually um, um, in investing in equity in oil and gas fields. And we currently are operating a field in Oman with Mitsui, where we are the operators. We bid for Lebanon uh, round and we were unsuccessful. And we bid for Cyprus. So now we are very actively uh, looking for the next round of bids that we in Lebanon and Cyprus. In addition, there's a new uh, FSRU, floating uh, LNG unit. We, are, we have bid with Egolar, one of the largest FSRU operators in Lebanon, and now there's a bid coming out in Cyprus. So basically, to in answer to your question, uh, oil and gas is um, one of the dominant factors in our business, and uh, this new emerging Mediterranean is something that uh, we definitely will look at. And uh, I think that hopefully these countries, uh, God willing, they'll find enough gas to be self-sufficient. In order to be more productive, you have to go more into automation. You have to go more into robotics. You have to go more into new innovation types. 
That doesn't mean that we forget about trying to improve productivity. You know, we have our own ways of lean construction, lean uh, construction, better controls, tools, logistics, etc. Now, we as you see, this is our uh, bread and butter. Just to give an order of magnitude, we spend every year between 300 to 350 million man hours of direct construction. Imagine if you save 5% of that, that's millions of dollars. So that part we're trying to do. The second part of the equation is to try to take some of these man hours, convert them into robotics. For example, automatic fabrication. For example, instead of having uh, plastering a wall, you do it by robots. First, you control the wastage. Second, you control the productivity. All this is in an infancy stage, and we, are, uh, we cannot do it on our own. What we have done is we have partnered. We have partnered with some of the leaders in the world in 3D printing from uh, in Europe. We have partnered with people who are excellent in fabrication and automation. We have also led uh, the MIM, which is called the Building Intelligent Management System, where you have a 3D and 4D. So I think this is the future. And uh, the other point is our average camp is 5,000 men live in a camp in a desert or in a remote area. Imagine the amount of generators you have to put, electrical generators, and the amount of diesel you have to, and CO2 emission. So we have developed now in three of our camps, an independent 24-hour camp, and we developed a, uh, with our German partner a battery where you can collect the sun in the day from solar panels, store them in these efficient batteries, and at night operate the cabin by solar. We have now three units happening, one in Qatar, one in Abu Dhabi, one in Oman. And we got an award recently in one of the uh, conventions for this innovation. So this is part of, uh, again, CO2 emission. So I think that no company the size of CC can ignore this. You have to move in that direction first, improving the man hours, second, improving the CO2 emission. Some people will come from the uh, you know, academia, will tell you, we're going to eliminate uh, engineers, uh, we're going to eliminate workers, we're going to be 90% automated, digitalized. I totally disagree with that. It has to go hand in hand. They have to work in parallel to uh, process work faster, to eliminate mistakes, to uh, eliminate reworks, and to optimize the processes. So the digitalization is here to stay, but it's not to replace the human being. Because you need, at, after the end of the day, you need um, uh, the human interaction and the human values that I think, even today, many of uh, people say that you're going to have a learning uh, machine or a learning computer that can learn from mistakes. Fine, you can do it to cover a certain scope, but the whole EPC value chain, you cannot totally, in my view, uh, get, get it automated. For the construction industry to develop, something is missing, and that's collaboration, unfortunately. And this is something we found out with uh, in the World Economic Forum, we made a survey. And all of us have our own uh, silos, our own ways. We have, you know, what we call knowledge management. Each company has its own knowledge management or lesson learned. And we found that our industry is one of the less collaborative industry. And we are trying here in Greece with uh, Greek companies like ours, engineering companies, construction, European companies, to have more collaboration. There's many institutes related to our industry. We try to participate in these. I think this is something that if we want to advance an industry, we have to promote and work on. And uh, CCC and other Greek engineering and uh, construction companies will benefit. That's the first era as an industry. Now, as a region, this is specifically related to Greece and the Middle East, that our, at the end, our uh, faith are together. We have to find ways where there's a win-win for all parties concerned. And how, you to, how we have to look, what are the added values that the Arab countries can bring to Greece, and vice versa, what are the added values that Greece can bring to the Arab world. And this is part what we, as you see, are trying to promote not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of the countries we operate in. You know, as my father always used to say, 
if you want to have a repeated business, if you want to have a good name, you must think of yourself that you are guests in the country you are operating in, whether it's here, Lebanon, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi. And as guests, you have to make the gesture of what you can offer so that if there is something, an opportunity comes, the first thing they'll think of CCC doesn't only think about itself.